I'm not going to sit here now and say that we knew that three or four years later he'd be winning Scottish Nationals. When you're a kid, it's the, it's the race you want to ride in more than any. Well, it was for me anyway. You know, there's something in there somewhere which is just a bit different. As long as he takes the fences, um, I think he's got a massive chance. If he can win that for Wales, it'd be great. With the Randox Grand National on the horizon, trainers across the UK and Ireland are readying their superstars for the big occasion. And we've come to Ogmore by Sea, to Christian Williams and to see Kitty's Light to find out a little bit more about their unique approach to preparation. We always find there's no real recipe with racehorses, so, you know, with the Irish point to pointers, the stores, food flat horses, but JD Moore actually bought, bought Kitty's Light, mm. um, unnamed at the time. Mm. And um, yeah, just Nathaniel, we thought that he was a good sire, maybe turn into a national sire further down the line. So it's not really the recipe that's ended up with Kitty's Light being a you know, four mile stay in chase and winning the races he's won. Mm. Probably bought four or five of the similar type horse, but Kitty's Light from from the day we broke him in, we, we always thought he had a nice way of going. He had a mm -hmm. big lollop in stride, carried his head in a nice place. Got a lovely video of Jack. I think Jack was 15 at the time, cantering down the beach. Kitty's light was two. So he always had a nice way of going. When did you know that he was a little bit different? Uh, we knew he was a nice, he had a good attitude, clean-winded. As I said, he had a nice big stride on him, carried his head in a lovely place. He ran his first bumper, I think, I think he finished sixth of 13 or something. So we're not going to sit here now and say that we knew that three or four years later he'd be winning Scottish Nationals and bet 365 Gold Cups, but we thought he was a nice horse. He obviously has been a real big part of Jack's life and Jack's way of sort of riding has probably developed as much as Kitty's ability to jump fences as well. Have you seen them sort of grow together quite amazing sort of the, the the route that they both take and they sort of developed at the same level yeah of course jack was a big big talent um when he's right now you're 14 or 15 he'd you know horses would always jump for him on a schooling field and you'd have older jockeys come in and jack would just have him dip there's no miss up so when when jack would school young horses older horses so he's obviously very good natural natural talent he's a strong rider and obviously knows kitty's light very well which helps I think I went to Christian when I was about 15, like you said. Um, I, he used to pick me up in the mornings to go to work. Um, I only live half a mile down the road, and it's just, you know, it's, he's been very, very, very good to me. Um, he put me in great opportunities, and, you know, I was lucky enough to um, get David Pipe's job this year, um, and that's probably just down to Christian and giving me the chances and putting me, you know, in the position to be getting offered a job like that. So, yeah, I can dedicate it mostly, mostly to him. I think we actually wanted him to run on the flat when he was when he was two, but that obviously didn't work out. I think we galloped him one morning uh, in Lambourne with Brendan Powells, and we had that and another one. And we thought the other one was all right. We thought Katie's light was useless, and um, I remember Brendan Powell saying the one you thinks all right is useless, and Katie's light, as it turned out, he said he he's not very quick, but he'll he'll do a job jumping. I think a lot of horses, especially ones that start off life down down where we are, it's very unique how, how we train kind of thing, and. Um, He's always been pretty straightforward. He just takes life as it comes and um, doesn't do anything very exciting. But yeah, no, he's, he's he's part of the furniture now almost. You suddenly go onto this amazing role. Did you just see a horse that's just sort of lit up one day? How did he come into himself? Was it quite obvious to you that this is Kitty's and he's sort of turned a bit of a corner into the new year? Yeah, very similar this year. You could see only three weeks ago that. You know, we obviously study them every day and you can just see him starting to change and we've seen him this morning, looks in great form. And it just seems to be his time of year maybe and he probably likes fast ground. He, just, he actually ran a Cheltenham the other day on heavy ground and thought he handled the ground, ground okay, run quite well. So perhaps we could try and win another Welsh National. Last year what he did was was pretty special really, you know, he won three of the biggest staying chases in about a month and a half. Um, I'm not sure if it's done, been done before, I'm not sure it'll probably be done again, but um, I think that the day in Sandown, um, you know, a week after winning a Scottish National, the way, the way he went through the race that day and, and, and did it, he, he must have been a tired horse and, you know, he didn't, he didn't look it, but he must have been and I think that was 
you know, just purely down to, you know, how tough he is. Did you quite enjoy when people said to you, you can't do that, no horse can do that? Does that give you a little bit more wanting to prove them wrong? Is that something that really gets your blood pumping? That's the yeah, you also try and, try and do what's right by the horse, first and foremost. But he is different from, you know, it'd be different from any other horse I train, the way he recovers from his races. And, you know, there's something in there somewhere which is just a bit different. And it was this, exactly the same this year when he obviously won the Scottish National, the Coral Scottish National. And then seven days later then went to Sandown. He was just a bit different. So we, I wanted to give him the chance to do that because we knew he was different and the same going back to Sandown three or four years ago as a five-year-old, we knew that you know, he was capable. And obviously last year's Bet365 Gold Cup, it was a very emotional moment. We had obviously learned about Betsy's diagnosis and the racing community seemed to really rally behind your family. Was that a very special day that took you sort of outside of the racing bubble? It felt more than just about racing, it's about what it can do to really boost you at a time that was so important. Yeah, the, the Coral Scottish National last year was very, very emotional. It was, um, you know, we basically thought we could win the race. We had a horse to win the race and off the back of what happened to my family, that was the first big win after that so that was very very emotional and then sander then was a bit of a not a breeze but it was like the the scotland bit had been done and we were just going to sand down to you know enjoy the day there wasn't too much pressure on um, jack was riding the horse that he knows so well so if jack wasn't happy the horse could be pulled up after a mile or if, if everything wasn't going right so it was just a bonus just a great bonus there and that was a great you know happy day at Sandown, whereas that air was very emotional. Done the Welsh National, you've done the Scottish National, you're very much a target trainer, you've done, gone back to, to Santa, done the Bet365, you've got your redemption in a way. Was, is the Grand National, has it always been in your mind? When did it start to become a, 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 a kind of a plan that you felt like you could actually go about doing? Because I'd say it was, probably wasn't obvious early days. No, it was just a race that, you know, we're all National Hunt people, horse fans, and that was a race that everyone wants to win. And the owners, Owners deserve a, obviously a grand, grand national season as well. You know the excitement, the weights, the you know the lead into it. So the owners deserve that, and because we think he's a special horse, he probably deserves to have one one crack at it as well and, and see how it goes. Obviously, he does, he does his best work over four mile. There doesn't seem to be a bottom to him. He finishes races so strong. So I think as long as he adapts to the fences and has a little bit of luck early on in the race, you know the, his strongest part is is his finishing, doing his best part in the latter part of the race. And, you know, you've seen Grand Nationals, how, how they change, you know, from the third last to the second last, how the leaders change after the second last. And there's obviously only one winning line, so Kitty's Light seems to know where the winning line is and all systems go to Aintree. What's your own memories of it as a, as, a, as a jockey? Because we know that you've been placed in it, you've, the, the, the race has changed, obviously, but with your experience in the race itself, how does that help you with Kitty's Light, knowing, you know, even giving advice and experience advice to someone like Jack riding, riding the race, how, is that, how does that help you going forward? Yeah, Jack will have a fair idea in his head, I would have thought, he knows the horse very well, but they had wonderful memories there myself, riding the player second, big fella thanks, I think was fifth a couple of times, and it's just a spectacle, same with Cheltenham, you know, you dream of, we're just very lucky to be in a position where we've got a horse that can take us to this meeting and, you know, taking us to the to the Grand National with a chance. You know, early on it'll just be very much keeping him on his feet and, and just getting him in, in a bit of a rhythm. You know, from experiences of riding in it, it's a very it's a very fast race down over the first four and then kind of when you get your position you just gotta, you know, try and hold it and just keep keep creeping away. As long as he takes to the fences, um, I think he's got a massive chance. Um, and you know the one thing we we know he will will do is he'll be galloping from the back of the last one. A lot of others won't be. Be a bit nervous watching the race. Obviously, hopefully the family will be able to come. But no, it's, we're very excited now, and just to see him this morning and see him in great form. And don't want to go out there saying he's going to win the Grand National. I've seen a lot of people, trainers, owners, tipping their horses for Cheltenham that finish out the back. So, <laughs> but we just hope that you know hopefully do us proud and just just very privileged to be there. And it's obviously the horse that's 
you know, the horse is going to take there and get us involved in those days. We're very lucky, very lucky to have him. Do your, your girls understand how important it is to have a Grand National runner? Are they enjoying it from afar as much as, as, much as you guys all are? Yeah, I would have thought so. We don't live on the yard, so we don't walk out into the field and catch the pony every day. Should do more with them with the ponies, really, maybe in the summer. But um, no, they enjoy it. Obviously, the coverage we got last year on ITV, and they were obviously watching it at home, and they loved that. Try and build memory as much as we can, and after the bad news we got, try and make the best of a bad situation, and just hope for a little bit of luck now, and we can't be more thankful for the support we've had. Picture Kitty's coming to the to the last, he's still got plenty of ground to make up, but you know that Jack's got plenty left. What, what would those feelings be like? Oh, it'll be hard to, hard to describe. You know, we won Scottish Nationals, Welsh Nationals, but the main, the main one is the, the, the Randolph's Grand National, so... <laughs> it might be emotional again, and you know, just pride, pride in the horse, and you know, Kitty's eyes get, gets a lot of local support and a lot of Wales follow him, so if he can win that for Wales, it'd be great. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.